This video is proudly sponsored by New Type. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewTypesHQ.com and use promo code UTAKABUTA for 10% off on your next purchase. Hey, what's going on my dudes and dudettes and welcome back to another exciting build from the good folks from Bendai Japan. So why don't we get started with the 1100 scale Master Grade RX-79G Gundam from the popular anime series Mobile Suit Gundam the 8th MST. And without further ado, let's get to it. Welcome back my dudes and dudes to another unique build from the good folks from Bendai and if you're new to this channel, welcome. So in this build, we are going to be taking a step back to the early 90s and what I mean by that is we're going to be tackling by far the most highly requested master grade on my channel, the RX-79G Ground Type Gundam from Gundam 18 Mobile Suit. Now as you can clearly see here from the box art, this sucker oozes with that 90s charisma, just simple box art aesthetic showing the front and back side of the Mobile Suit while giving you a glimpse of what you can expect for a cockpit detail already pre-sculpted hands with some form of articulation and a very simplistic inner frame. As for the other side of the boxer, you get a nice glimpse of what you can do for action poses for this mobile suit while following up with the biggest gimmick for this model kit, and then that is its weapon accessories. This guy is packed to the brim with a beam saber, cannon, machine gun, beam rifle, as well as a shield and a handful of spare cartridges. But the one thing I love about this mobile suit the most is its presentation. This is something that I really wish most master grades do, but I understand why it seems like it's a big waste of time. So. As always, when you open up the box art, you are happily greeted with the instruction manual, which by the back side gives you the back side of the mobile suit, which is kind of weird, but okay, that's fine. But when you open up the oops, but when you open up the very first page, you get this beautiful illustration of the mobile suit itself from the front and back side, while at the same time giving you more glimpse and information on how this guy was constructed for the mobile suit infantry. As for the following page, it gives you a nice representation of the mobile suit from a front and side view, followed by page number two, which is kind of unique because it actually tells you you're gonna need a microfilm. Phillips head screwdriver to really tighten in those areas on the mobile suit so that way you can do cool poses. As for the next page, it gives you these awesome illustrations of the head, cockpit, and arm unit. These are things that you would never see in the anime, and it's nice that they include these illustrations in this manual to really make these things feel alive. I love that aesthetic. Followed by page number five, which is a nice illustration of the foot inner frame as well as weapon accessory. And as for the second to last page, gives you even more lore what these mobile suits were fully capable of working in desert climates or even in the jungle foliage. These guys were built like tanks. Further down the page, you're gonna get a small glimpse of what you can expect for weapon accessories. And on the next page, gives you this nice simplistic chart to do some custom painting. Now, this is optional. You don't have to do any painting for this particular mobile suit. It's, like I said, it's optional, but the way how it's presented, it definitely kind of wants to push you in that direction to do some custom painting. So I think that's a nice little way of encouraging new builders to try something new to get out of their comfort zone. And as for the final pages, gives you a small glimpse of how to construct the weapon accessories and apply the sticker decals and the dry transfers, which is something relatively new for those mobile suits back in the day. Overall, very excited and look forward to taking a look what's inside. As for the first runners, you get these nice sea blue pieces followed by the classic red pieces and a small selection of pre-sculpted hands. Next runners up, nothing too special, but the classic white pieces followed by the weapon accessories and behind these pieces are the sticker decals and dry transfers. Now this particular time, sticker decals were like the safest route to put these guys on. Not many people were comfortable putting on water slide decals, so this is like around the time where Bendai was experimenting, trying something new and at the same time trying something that is familiar. So you get the sticker foliage decals for the camera and eyes and a small selection of sticker decals for the whole remaining body. As for the next runners, you're gonna get the classic red, blue, and yellow pieces that really make those areas pop out, followed by a small runner set of clear pieces, which are gonna be primarily for the Gundam's eyes and camera module. Now, as for the next runners, you're gonna get a massive assortment of inner frame pieces, while followed by the weapon accessories, polycaps, and micro Phillip head screwdrivers to really lock in those areas in, followed by a small assortment of white runners, two beam sabers, and a very small little figurine of Shiro Umada, both in his standard pose while another one inside the cockpit pose. Very nice little attention to detail. Overall, I'm very excited to tackle this master grade and I'm looking forward to see what I can do for custom LED installation. Overall, I'm excited and I'm hyped. Now, before we get started doing any kind of foreign custom LED installation, I need to evaluate how many LED lights I can really cram inside the head. Now, naturally, 
most people would just put in a three millimeter bulb and you'll be good. You know, it'll give you just enough light to light up both eyes and barely light up the camera module. Now the camera module itself is optional, but for me personally, I want each three section to light up independently. So before I do that, I need to mask out the eyes so that way I can make the, um, the areas really pop out. So what I'm basically using is a masking tape to mask out the eyes. And then once I get them nicely, perfectly grooved into that section, I'm then gonna be using an X-Acto blade to cut around the eyes while leaving the back part of the eyes exposed, if that makes any sense. What I'm basically doing is protecting the eyes so that way when I use a flat black to spray behind them, that surface area will be blocked out by any kind of light bleeding. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does, so it doesn't hurt to have some extra paint lying around to really cover up those little areas that you miss. Overall, this method works, but it is time consuming. Now this process is optional, but I've been playing a ton of Gundam battle operations and I love that wingtip LED light positions that they have on the shoulder blade. So since this model kit already has that section already hollowed out to the point where I can sneak in an LED light, what I'm basically gonna be doing is blocking that area with a small slither of masking tape on the front and back side of that section. So once I'm done doing my painting application, I can then remove that tape and then expose those areas. So this method is, once again, it is optional. You don't have to do this, but for me, I wanna take my model kits to the next step to make them look really cool.
All right, my dudes and dudettes, as this video is wrapping up, I want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions about this market. So first and foremost, I'm just going to get it out of the way. I am going to be building more of these AT Master Grades kits. These guys are fun, super, super fun, fun, fun. I'm sorry if I'm geeking out, but there, there's a reason for that. Building these old school Master Grades are definitely a lot of fun. The downside is they are not really designed to do a lot of crazy articulation. There is definitely a lot of limitations when it comes to the knee to really pull off that classic cannon pose like you would see in the anime and illustration works. There's a great deal of articulation in the arms, a decent amount of rotational um, movement around the wrist with the ball joint there, good a range of articulation around the head, um, but there's no ab crunch. You only get a, you get the swivel left and right, and that's pretty much it. Posability is very, very limited for this model kit, but the fact that, that there is a great deal of cavity space in there, and there's tons and tons of options to put in custom LED lighting, it's great. While at the same time, this kit definitely breaks you out of your comfort zone of really experimenting with ways of painting it, whether it's doing a straight clean build, doing some light um, pre-shading, or breaking out of your other comfort zone, doing some some sort of weathering. And I, I, I didn't do a lot of heavy weathering. I want to keep it consistent. So that way it doesn't overpower my next projects that I want to work on. But overall experience, it's a great kit. My biggest problem I had with this kit overall was probably the dry transfers. They just broke and flaked off. I didn't probably apply them correctly or I didn't probably put enough of a top coat over the area to protect the paint. So that's on me. It happens, you know, mistakes happens when you build these kits. But overall, this kit is cool. But I think another thing I do love about this kit the most is its weapon accessories. This guy is packed with tons of little cool weapon accessories that you can deconstruct and reconstruct and then stuff them into the backpack unit and you are good to go. Overall consensus, this kit's great. It's easy to build. You can get this guy knocked out in less than a day. It is that easy, but at the same time, so satisfying to build. But probably the most satisfying thing about this model kit, the asking price is only $40. That's great. For an old school kit like this, it's a great entry level for someone to build their very first master grade. Awesome. Of all the Master Grades that are out there that are like under $50 to $60, this is a nice kit to take a break from what is hot right now and focus on something that is old and new. So definitely for people who do Gundam content on their channel for a living, I'm just going to say it like here and now, take a break from what's hot, try something that is old and new, you will not be disappointed. Because if anything, you'll be more appreciative of what you build down the road. And with that being said, thank you dudes and dudes for watching this video. Thank you for the likes and shares and the subscribes. A big thank you to the new Patreons. You guys made this project a reality and I'm ever so grateful for your guys' support. But most importantly, the community, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching these videos for these troubling times. It's given me the incentive to keep on making content weekly. I'm probably going to need to take a break sooner or later, but for right now, I'm enjoying making these kits. I'm enjoying making these content for you guys that are going through these rough times. And if, if my videos can help relieve some of that stress, that means I'm doing my job. And like that, my dudes and dudettes, I will see you on the next video. Later.